in this video, we're gonna look at significant figures. When we talk about significant figures, we're referring to the digits or the numbers that we actually measure. So this is what we measure in a lab. And when we use a calculator, that always gives us extra numbers. These extra numbers aren't needed or wanted when we write our final answer, which means we need to round the calculated number and we need to pay attention to the significant figures so we don't overstate the accuracy of our answer. Because the more significant figures you have, the more accurate your calculation or your measurement is. So when you're looking at the first four digits on this number here, we know they are certain. Those are numbers we can accurately measure. The last number is typically what we call our estimated number. This is a number that we can read in between the lines when we're measuring on like a ruler. You can read in between the lines there or in a graduated cylinder or a burette or beaker. This number is kind of an estimated number. So I might call it a two, you may call it a three. And so the greater the precision of a measurement, the greater the number of significant figures we write. When we look at exact numbers, exact numbers have an unlimited number of significant figures. Exact numbers count discrete objects. So I can say there's four legs on a chair. That would be an exact number. Or they're an integral number that's part of an equation. They also may be some defined quantities. We know that there's exactly 12 eggs in a dozen. That's an exact number. And a lot of our conversion factors, when we get into calculations in chemistry, those we call exact numbers and they're defined quantities. Some are not, but most of our conversion factors typically are. So when we're looking at our significant numbers, a couple things to remember when we're trying to figure out what number is significant and what number is not. All non-zeros are significant. So numbers one through nine are significant. Any internal zero, that counts as a significant number. So I can say 101 would have three significant figures in it. That zero still counts. Trailing zeros also count as long as they fall after a decimal point. So if we had 12.00, that would have four significant digits because I'm saying I can measure to that second zero place. Trailing, zero, trailing zeros that fall before a decimal point are also significant. So if we had 100, and a decimal point there, those two zeros count as significant figures. Now here on number five, leading zeros are not significant. They're only there as a placeholder for us. So that would be an example of if I had 0 0.0012. Those, zero, those three zeros in front here, they are not significant. They're just placeholders. We can always rewrite this as scientific notation to get rid of those placeholders. And then any trailing zero at the end of a number, but we don't write a decimal point, are generally ambiguous and we really should avoid writing them in our chemistry calculations. So something like 100, I don't know if I actually measured exactly 100 or if it got estimated to 100. So these zeros are a little more ambiguous. Some people might say they're significant, some people might not. But if we put a decimal point there, it's definitely significant. Or if you end up with a situation like this, you can write it in scientific notation to lose the amb ambiguity. This way we can get rid of the ambiguity if we write it in scientific notation. So one way to decide if a number is significant or not is if you convert it to scientific notation and that zero still stays, it's significant. If the zero disappears when you write in scientific notation, it was not significant after all. So when we're looking at a number like the one written here and we try and apply our rules, the zero in the front here, 
It's what we call cosmetic one. It's there kind of just a service placeholder, just kind of to make it look prettier. The other ones here, these are again, placeholders. They're not significant. They're just used so we can figure out exactly where that decimal point is. The four, it's a non-zero number. It's a one through nine. So it counts right away. These two zeros in the middle, they're in the middle of two numbers. So therefore they count as a significant figure. And then we have our four and a five, since they're one through nine, they still count. And our last two zeros here, since they're trailing zeros after a decimal point, that means we're able to measure to that. So that means those numbers are significant. When we're looking at potential ones and figuring out what's significant, what's not, and how many significant figures each one of these has. 918.010. That would have six significant figures. We can look at another number, 0 0.0001. That would have one significant figure. All those zeros in it are placeholders. 8,120. A little ambiguous because we're not sure about that zero. So we're going to say it has three significant figures. That zero will go, will probably go away when we write it in scientific notation. Same thing with nine, with 91,010. That would have four significant figures. That last zero is not significant. But now if we add 91,010.0, all of those numbers count. All those numbers would be significant. So we'd have six significant figures here. 1,090.000. All of those count. We have trailing zeros after the decimal point. We have a decimal point there. So every number here would count and we'd have seven significant figures. Makes sense? See, nice and easy. So now when we figure out significant figures for our calculations, we always wanna for, we follow our order of operation, our PIDMAs. So that's parentheses first, then your exponents, multiplication and division, then addition and subtraction. So when we're doing our calculations, we have to pay attention to significant figures in slightly different ways. When you do addition and subtraction, you're always going to round your answer to the least significant number after the decimal point. So with addition and subtraction, you really pay attention to the decimal point. And we'll see an example of this in just a minute. For multiplication and division, we only care about the least number of significant figures total within our number. And we'll see an example of this also. So looking at addition and subtraction. When you have the same number of digits on the right, we measure the number to the fewest digits after the decimal point, so to the right of the decimal point. So if we have 6.531 plus 2.1. I'm looking at the number after the decimal point here. For my first number, I have three numbers after the decimal point. For my second number, I only have one, which means my answer will only have one number after the decimal point. So when you add it, you get 8.631, which when we adjust for significant figures, we get 8.6, and that would be our final answer. So remember with addition and subtraction, always look at how many numbers you have after the decimal point. If you don't have a decimal point, your answer will not have a number after the decimal point. Now looking at multiplication and division, our final answer is always rounded to the same number of significant figures as the measured number with the fewest amount of significant figures. So again, looking at 2.3, 138 times 4.1. 2.138, the total number has four significant figures in it. For 4.1, that has two significant figures. That means my answer can only have two significant figures when I have my final answer. So when you multiply this out and you put in your calculator, you get 8.7658. A lot of numbers there. 
the only numbers that matter are the first two. So we have 8.8. .8. You may be asking why we got 8.8 .8 instead of 8.7. The reason we did is because of rounding. So when we're doing rounding and rounding our significant figures, when the numbers are used in a calculation, there is the result is often rounded to reflect the significant figures of the actual data. For calculations that involve multiple steps, always wait till the end before you round. Don't round along the way. Waiting till the end prevents small rounding errors, which will affect your final answer. And then only use the last of the digits being dropped to decide what gets rounded. Don't worry about what else is there. So that way, if we have 4.569, the six, and let's say we had two significant figures, so I needed four point something, the six would cause the five to round. The nine doesn't matter. Or even if you had 4.549, the four is what matters for rounding. That nine doesn't count. So when you're rounding, you always want to round down. So four and less is rounding down. Five and more, you round up. So that means with our first number here, we'd end up with 4.6. And our second number would end up with 4.5. So when you're rounding, make sure you pay attention to that digit next to the one you're rounding. We don't care what else is there, just that one digit.